Hi! So in this video, we are going to determine the factored form of a polynomial given a complex root. So we can see that the polynomial given is a fifth degree polynomial with six terms. And they give us a little bit of a hint. They say the one of the zeros is complex and it's 6i. So since they give us, the first thing we need to identify is the fact that they gave us a zero that is 6i, okay? And so the second thing we want is to work backwards to find the factored form. Now this may take a little bit of work, including synthetic division or long division. However, we can continue the process until we get all factors. Now, because we know that this is a fifth degree polynomial, we know that we will have up to five factors. Well, two of them we can find quickly, given the fact that we have a complex zero of 6i, that means we originally had something in the end when we were solving of x equals 6i or x equal negative 6i. And if I rewrote this back using the zero product property backwards, I would subtract 6i here equal to zero or I would add 6i to the left and get this equal to zero. Then right before even setting each factor equal to zero, we had factors, right? So the x minus 6i was a factor and x plus 6i was a factor. And of course we had some other pseudo factors, right? We probably had some other ones here, right? All equal to zero. And so we'll go ahead and do some extra work to find these other three factors, but for now we can see that we have two of the five factors. Great, so we'll just put a little red star there and we're going to grab these later on. The next thing is to continue working backwards. And so we're going to go ahead and FOIL the two factors that we already have. So if I had x minus 6i times x plus 6i, these are a difference of two squares, right? And so this would be x squared minus 36i squared. And of course we can rewrite the i squared as negative one and get x squared plus 36. Okay, so here is um, one piece of the factors that we need in order to find these other three missing factors. Now continue working backwards. This is where it might get a little more involved. So step four, let me go ahead and use long division to see what's left. Because if I use long division, I already know this right here, this product, but to find what's left, if I need to find what this is completely a third degree polynomial right here in order to fa continue factoring that to get the full five factors in basically P of X in factor form. So in order to find this third degree polynomial, which are, is the product of these three factors that are missing, I have to use long division where x squared plus 36 is the divisor and p of x, 3x to the fifth plus 17x to the fourth plus 136x cubed plus 624x squared plus 1008x plus 432 is the dividend. So now we can go ahead and start that process. We can easily see that this is going to be um, x squared divided into 3x to the fifth will be, and using place value, 
we'll put it right over the x cubed term. Multiplying this out, we get 3x cubed times x squared, which is 3x to the fifth, which we wanted, 108x cubed. And we have to be careful here because we want to make sure that we align place values. Recall that x cubed terms are here. And so when we did this product, we have to keep things under x cubed because when we subtract, it has to be like terms. And so now when I subtract or add the opposite, right, these first term 3x to the fifth will cancel out. 17x to the fourth drops down and we get 136x cubed minus 108x cubed, which would be um, plus 28x cubed. Okay, the next piece is to see how we can get rid of this 17x to the fourth. Well, I can see that 17x to the fourth divided by x squared would give me 17x squared. And so now if I multiply 17 squared with these two in the divisor, I get 17x to the fourth plus 17x squared times 36. And that gives me 612. And so 612x squared will have to go under the x squared term, just keeping place values. So now, um, we, now we can go ahead and subtract. So the 17x to the fourth cancel like we want. We drop down 28x cubed. So we drop down 624x squared, and then we subtract 612x squared, which leaves us with positive 12x squared. The next thing we need is if I draw these lines a little farther out, I could see that I'm going to need to drop down the plus 1000x. I now need to look at 28x cubed and divide it by x squared and get 28x. Keeping place value, I'll write it over the x terms. Now I would go ahead and um, multiply and put things in their according place value. So 28x times x squared gives you 28x cubed. 28x times 36 gives you 1008x. And so go ahead and draw the line and we're going to subtract or take the opposite. So go ahead now and subtract and these 28x cubes will cancel. We drop down the 12x squared. And 1,000x minus 1,000x also cancels, and now we can drop down the very last constant term, which is 432. And so now we take the 12x squared and divide it by x squared to get 12. So we put it over the constant term, place value, and multiply it out. And so then we get 12x squared plus 12 times 36, which is 432. And so now we subtract or add the opposite. And so 12x squared minus 12x squared cancels. 432 minus 432 also cancels. And notice I'm left with 0, and it's not a remainder. So what polynomial is left from these three factors? Two of them are x minus 6 times x plus 6. But if this product of these three factors end up being 3x cubed plus 17x squared plus 28x plus 12. So this is what's left. So the next thing we can do is taking this nice third degree polynomial and we can now use 
synthetic division or long division, um, however um, method that you want to use. I also encourage using technology and graphing it and maybe seeing where the zeros are. Algebraically, we will be using synthetic division to find the factors. And so we need to use um, the rational root theorem and take quotients of the last and first term, right, plus or minus, and all its factors. So we can do plus or minus 6 over plus or minus 3, which gives plus or minus 2. And then we could do plus or minus 4 divided plus or minus 3, and then so on. So I'm going to go ahead and go on a whim and say I think we're going to use negative 2. So x equal negative 2. And if I put this into 3x squared minus, plus 17x squared plus 28x plus 12, I guarantee we're going to get 0. So let's go ahead and check. So 3 times negative 2 cubed plus 17 negative 2 squared plus 28, negative 2, plus 12. Great, and I, if I put this into the calculator, I will get 0, right? So we have 3 times negative 2 cubed um, plus 17 times negative 2 squared plus 28 times negative 2, and then plus 12. And sure enough, it's 0. OK, so this is 0. The next thing we can see is, is since this is a 0, this is going to be our third factor of 5. So it would be x plus 2 equal to 0, which implies that x plus 2 was the factor. And so I'm going to put a red star next to this one, right? This is 3 of 5. Using this now to use synthetic division, negative 2 here, use the coefficients of the poly third degree polynomial, so 3, 17, 28, and 12, 3, 17, 28, and 12. We put this line as the remainder, right? The last column on the right is the remainder. We draw a line across, and then we start the synthetic division process. So 3 just drops down, and then we get 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6. Adding down, 17 minus 6 is positive 11. Multiplying 11 times negative 2 is negative 22. Adding down, 28 minus 22 is positive 6. Negative 2 times 6 is negative 12. And adding down, 12 minus 12 is 0. So we have a remainder of 0, and we can see that after the synthetic division, we have 3x squared plus 11x plus 6. And so this is now what's left. Now we can find, in step 6, now we find the last two factors. So 3x squared plus 11x plus 6 factors really nicely. 3 is prime, so it splits up as 3x and x. And 6 will split up as plus 2 plus 3. Checking my foiling, 3x times 3x is 3x squared. 2 times 3 is 6. 
and 3x times 3 is 9x plus 2x is 11x. So these are now going to be 4 and 5 of 5 factors. Splitting, um, starring this in red, now we can put them all together. The first two factors that we found, recall, were from the complex 0, 6i. And so x minus 6i, x plus 6i was the two of five factors. The third factor we found was from after doing long division with those product of those two first factors and the p of x to get the third degree polynomial. And when we use the rational root theorem, I use x equal negative 2 as the 0 from the rational root theorem, checking by plugging and chugging into the calculator. Sure enough, that made a 0. Therefore, 3 of 5 factors is x plus 2. The last two was after synthetic division between the um, third degree polynomial and that root from the rational root theorem, I got a second degree polynomial and that could be easily factored. So I easily factored and I got the last two factors. Let's go ahead and put it all together. We get p of x equal to x minus 6i, x plus 6i times the third factor we found, x plus 2, and the last two factors we just got from factoring, 3x plus 2 times x plus 3. So you can see that this process is quite lengthy, but I do encourage you to go ahead and factor it. Again, recall when you have two complex factors, that means that area is above or below the x-axis, that there's not any touching of the x-axis. However, when you have the real factors, those are going to be the points in the original graph of p of x that are touching the x-axis. Let's go ahead and graph p of x to see um, a visual. So uh, y equals um, 3x to the fifth, 3x to the fifth, right? plus 17x to the fourth, plus uh, 136x cubed, plus 624x squared, plus um, 1008x, plus that last one, 432. And so let's go ahead and graph it. So we can see here that the graph is here, and it looks really uh, thin. But if I stretch it out, there we go. Now it looks like a regular third, uh, fifth degree polynomial, right? Um, we can see that there are some zeros at 3, negative 2 and in between negative 0.5 and 1. And so sure enough, if we go back to our factors, those were our real factors, right? Negative 2 thirds, negative 3 and negative 2. Okay, I hope this helps.